everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. My family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho. For those of you that are unfamiliar with our channel, we teach on faith-led preparedness, homesteading, off-grid living, and just basically enjoy sharing our lives, our lifestyle, and helping others become more self-reliant, more prepared in our crazy mixed-up world. Good morning, Jill. I hope you guys are all doing well today. It is a touch dreary here today, but it's it's a good day nevertheless, and I am able to be live, so we're going to knock on wood here and hope that my connection stays good. She says, hello. Jill says, that is better, lol. My head doesn't turn sideways like that. Yeah, no kidding. I was like trying to get it to straighten back out, and it wouldn't straighten, so I just... I just got rid of it. So good. It wasn't just me. I thought for sure it was sideways, but I couldn't tell. So <laughs> yeah, that would have been painful, right? Good morning, Miss Tammy. Guys, I have some really awesome, awesome news to share with you guys today. Good morning, Mike. Glad to have you joining me. And I think, I think today's title is very fitting for all of us, how many of you are raising your hand that you could use some encouragement on keep on keeping on, right? You know, um, life throws us all kinds of crazy stuff. And you, you deal with sickness and financial and marital and all, all kinds of stuff. You know, there's always something coming our way. And, you know, I think a lot of people think that um, in the Christian perspective that once you're a Christian life is just free sailing, it's really good and you know, you don't have to worry about all the chaos, but it's, I think even more so the opposite because we have a lot of spiritual attack going on, uh, spiritual attacks going on as a result of our faith and you know, sometimes we just burn out. How many of you are or have hit a place of burnout? I'm raising my hand. The mountain man just exited our home, but he would be standing here jumping up and down going like this. We are just burned out. As my grandfather used to say, my get up and go has got up and went. Exactly. I love that, Jill. That is so awesome. And it's a roller coaster ride. Exactly, Mike. It is. It is. And you know what? The thing is, and I believe the key is to enjoying life is truly being able to see the blessings all the time in the muck and the mire in the chaos in 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 it all and just knowing that you know the other thing is too that we can we can make our lives better which i've been talking about for weeks now and in ways that we can improve our day to day our livelihood our uh, our our schedules everything good morning george and you know, as I tell you guys, God leads me on these things, and this this has been quite an adventure for us. And we are we are down we are down to the wire. Let me share it this way: we are down to the wire. We have decided um, to take the next two weeks, possibly three finish whatever we can on this house and then list it for sale. Good morning, Chad. Because quite honestly, it is getting to the point where it is killing us and it is not worth that. We are just so burned out that both of us feel like we can't think straight anymore. And I, you know, I wanted to be real today. I wanted to share the realities of our situation because as we progress through these next two, three weeks, I know you will see different people transforming from this situation as well because we've been carrying these weights for a long time. Our situation has been progressing for three years now and, um, you know, there have been people in the Bible who lived through 40 years of of such weights and even heavier weights so I can't complain and I'm gonna say it this way a friend of mine shared this with me the other week and it was so priceless to hear this because I I hate complaining I don't like to complain and I don't want this to come off as any form of a complaint I am sharing facts with you and I am not complaining because honestly no matter how tired we are at the end of the day we still love our life 
and and we still love what what our goals are we still love what we are doing this for um, but sometimes you can't you can't you can't get rid of the tired you can't you can't get rid of the weariness that your body might feel you know you may not be weary you may have great faith but your body can't keep up with where your faith is and that is going to be a reality always and and God may be leading us to great places and taking us to great places and our our spiritual aspect of ourselves and our minds are there and following him joy filled and happy but our bodies are lingering behind trying to keep up it is a true fact and despite our despite where we are despite our tired and our weariness I'm going to share with you what God has been doing in our lives. Um, this is just unbelievable. And, and it's been this way all along. Um, not to this degree, but um, God is constantly blessing us. And how many of you would agree that when you are in that spot and you're trying to keep on and you get these tremendous blessings, is that not fuel for your fire to keep going? Is that not encouragement? Is that not inspiration? Is that not, could it not be any clearer that God is right there with you and sees your weakness, sees your needs, and is loving on you? I mean, when we are going through these things, it's just so, you can't deny that there is a God. And it's just been so amazing. Um, we've just been blessed in so many, so many ways. I'm going to share a couple things with you. You guys know the mountain man went to Georgia uh, for a week of work. And, uh... Those jobs pop up periodically. They're always a blessing. And um, he didn't get paid at the job. The job came in the mail. And we picked that up at the post office. And, you know, in our circumstances here and trying to finish things, we need the finances to be able to purchase materials and to have fuel to run around. I mean, we just, and, and we are working. That has been a blessing, too, that we've had um, jobs and we have jobs lined up for months out already it's really really amazing and I've been getting a lot of web work so God has been blessing us in so many ways but we went to the post office and picked up the check for that job and sat in the truck on the ride home in tears it was three times more than we had anticipated I mean it was just an incredible incredible blessing and um this week we went into town to get materials for our job and we stopped at the post office and um, went to our P.O. box in there and I was looking for the renewal for our box because I knew it was coming due and there was another envelope in there and it totally my brain was not as I said we're tired and at times right now I don't feel like we're thinking straight we're just really really pushing um, to keep up with our work, to keep up with the things that we need to get done and to keep moving on here, as well as the construction here. So we work all day and then come home and work here. So I, I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that somebody had spent $7.35 to mail me a priority envelope with a letter in it. I just was really confused. So in opening it, um, two money orders fell out of that envelope. I have no idea who it came from. So whoever you are that is out there watching this, um, and I hope you are watching this, um, from the bottom of my heart and from the mountain man's heart, we thank you greatly for your generosity. I have no idea who it was. All they put in there was a, a lovely handwritten note that said Luke 638. And I will read that to you guys for those of you that are not familiar with six, uh, Luke 6.38. But God is good and God is gracious. God knows our needs. God knows our limitations. So don't ever question on your journey when you're trying to keep keeping on that he's not present. Um, Luke 6.38 reads... Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. 
The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. And uh, that was quite a shock um, to both of us. We just, I mean, I opened it up and just started bawling. Um, because I've been talking about the need for us to be this way in our lives. And as I say when I'm sharing it with you guys, you know, I, we aren't sharing these things to in, in expecting anything in return. We share what we share because we feel prompted by God to share what we speak about and to share our journey because we know others can benefit from what we are walking out right now. And um, it was just really, really incredible. Now, I'm going to share more with you. In addition to that blessing, there was a more of a reason for that blessing than we could have even understood. That was at like 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning. At noon, same day, we got an email from one of the creditors that have been haunting us stating that if we didn't settle with them by yesterday, which is the second, we were in town on the first, if we didn't settle on the second, that we would be in litigation and there would be a lawsuit against us. Guys, had that gift not been in our P.O. box, we would be in litigation with that creditor. Instead, we were able to take care of it. And in addition to that, we felt God leading us to pay it forward also because we knew of someone that was in need and walking out a rough situation too. And we felt really prompted by God to be able to pay that forward also. So we did. Um, so it's important that we do what we do and we don't anticipate anything in return and that we just live a life based on God's terms and, and do it in a wholehearted way, in a way that we are standing upright because people are watching and people are learning from our, our, our level of integrity, our level of faith. And, and you will never ever know in your lifetime how many lives you touch, how many people you have helped just by being you. So I had to share that today because that was just something that was so incredibly breathtaking and awing for us. You know, here we are in this spot where we are like just staggering in a stupor of totally being wore out, totally being exhausted, and God constantly, constantly, constantly renewing us and picking us up, surrounding us with amazing people, surrounding us with caring people, and, and just him enveloping us all the time and surrounding us in his blessings in his love so i had to share that today that was just some something that was just tremendous so whoever you are you know who you are you you must follow us um what a blessing what a gift and and thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you um it was just incredible and, and thank you, Tammy. Tammy says, what a wonderful blessing for you. And you multiplied your blessing. Yeah, because, you know, guys, if we follow God and God's promptings, um, it's amazing what transpires from, from it. And it's not, you know, that, like I said, it's not that you live expecting that. It's just part of it. His promise is that he will take care of us. His promise is that he will never leave us. And guys, honestly, he never does. He, he just never does. He's always present. And it's just so amazing. And, and another thing I was going to teach on today that didn't quite materialize, but is now feeling like I'm feeling like I should be speaking about it is that have you ever been prompted to do something? 
and and you questioned it or you didn't have feel gutsy enough to, to do whatever you were feeling prompted to do and then later you regret not making that move and it doesn't necessarily have to be in blessing somebody I'll give you an example um, in my younger days um, in my previous marriage we had purchased a Victorian home and the home was actually this is thinking about it's pretty neat it was a it was a pastor's it was the parsonage for years and years and uh, my office actually was in his office and uh, really neat old house and it was filled to the brim with antiques all every room and it was just amazing and those of you that follow me know I love old things I love antiques and uh, I asked the guy uh, for a potato chip can I know that sounds funny but my mother collected old tins and I saw the potato chip can and I thought that she would enjoy it and that's the only thing I asked for but I had been prompted to ask him what he was gonna do with all the antiques and I didn't at settlement I said something to, and this is this is the son. the The pastor had passed away, so did his wife. So the son was stuck going through all of this stuff. Come to find that he just loathed. He, he it was a task that he didn't enjoy, and a lot of the things got thrown away. And at settlement, I said to him, uh, "You know, those antiques were just amazing. I would have loved to have had them." And he goes, "Sure. Now you tell me." He goes, had I known that before, I would have just left them all there for you. So, when we are prompted in life, do you see the irony there, guys? I mean, had I opened my mouth and mentioned what I was being prompted to ask, and that was a very big turning point in my life. That was a point in my life where I learned that the importance of asking. Because at worst, what's going to happen is the person is going to say yes or no. No harm, no foul. But if you don't ask, you'll never know. And at that point and at that table there that day, that was when I learned to ask regardless. Because the worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to say no. And, and um, that was a very valuable lesson. That house was just loaded with amazing, amazing things. But... That also happens in our spiritual life where we are prompted to gift people or do things for people and um, we neglect to do so and then later wish we had or see the reasoning why we were prompted to do it and 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 should have so I want to encourage you and I just realized something in saying this Bear with me one second. There are two people that struggle to find my live videos, and I want to really quickly share the link with them so they can come find me and join me. Bear with me one second. All right, there's one. And let me share with the other real quickly here. Um, you can, in the right-hand corner of the video that you are watching right now, you should be able to click on that and ask it to notify you when I am live. I try to go live every Wednesday at 7, I'm sorry, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, occasionally, I have to alter that time and um, come on a little later or another time. Hello, Mona. Good, I'm glad you found me. Was it because I sent you that message? I'm not sure why it's not alerting people, but I am glad you are here. Now, I am going to take a brief second and go get a tissue so I quit snipping on you guys. I couldn't help but be tear jerk. so excuse me a second. Okay, there's nothing worse than snipping like crazy. I pack my tissue box away. <laughs> but was that not amazing news? So what I want to encourage you guys is when you feel like you are being prompted to do something, and of course, I'm not saying if you're prompted to feel like you should rob a bank that you should just go do it. I'm talking 
wholesome things, guys. <laughs> um, but oftentimes we are prompted to do things and we just um, acknowledge the thought um, but disregard it. I have learned that when those things come through, hello, missus, come on. My partner in crime. <laughs> when we are prompted to do those things, there's reason for it. And um, when you learn to discern that it's God prompting you to do these things, um, you just... I've learned to just embrace them very quickly and to do them because I know there's purpose in them and um, it's also really amazing. So I want to I wanna encourage you guys when you are feeling prompted and led to do something, um, whether it's uh, being there for somebody, uh, whether it's um, you know financially gifting somebody, if it's helping somebody um, run errands, whatever the case may be, even if it's just sending somebody a card or being there for somebody, listening to somebody, sometimes just being a good listener can be the most precious gift to people. Mona says, morning, Suge, run your finger through your hair. Ah! <laughs> Mona loves when I do this, my long hair. So there you go. That was for you, mama. <laughs> good morning, Jessica. So these, this is important to me to just remind you guys to do that because while we are keeping, trying to keep on keeping on, you know, there's great fulfillment in being able to bless others. When we bless others through our struggles, it enables us to lose um, our, it distracts us from what is weighing us down. And you know, regardless how hard you try and how strong and how mighty your faith is, it's going to happen that you get worn down. It's going to happen that our body doesn't keep up with our spirit, okay? And, and you know, I used to get upset by that and I used to be really distraught by that because um, my faith is strong. Why am I so tired? Why am I so wore out and you know should I be caring better for myself and even when I do care better for myself sometimes you know we just have to experience that place of just being worn out and you know God brings us to these places sometimes to be able to nurture us hello Terry oh good to have you joining me girl so it's just really important that we Learn to accept the places that we land. Um, and I say that, I say that my husband always laughs at me. What were you flying? No, but when I was sick, you know, ending up flat on my back was um, a challenge at first because I'm used to going. I was, I'm a type A personality. I'm a constant mover. Um, I'm learning to shuffle my type A personality so that it's more productive and, and, and less destructive on my body. You know, so learning, learning to adjust things as we've been talking about all year. Every Wednesday I talk about a different phase of being able to be good to ourselves and being able to keep ourselves going even through the struggles. And I know many of you guys are struggling through different things, through pain and illness and um, financial struggles and marital struggles and and, and health, if I didn't mention that. I mean, there's just so many different things we're all walking out. And we're all walking them out at the same time. And we're all going through the same type of emotions. We're all going through them whether we are going through the same circumstance or not. Our, even though our circumstances aren't the same, we're paralleling in where we are in our spiritual and mental and physical walks. And it's good to have somebody to remind you that you're not alone, to remind you to grab your bootstraps, maybe that you're not strong enough at the point you're in to have the, the ability to do that or that you've gotten to a place where you can't get out alone. You know, you're, all these things I've been talking about I know can can help others 
and and help you as you're you're going through your walk I wanted to ask too many of you have mentioned um, you know varying different prayer requests Charles is on good morning Charles Charles had teeth extracted this week and was asking for prayer and I know that he's doing well we've been communicating so I am glad to see you here and I am glad to see that God is always always answering prayer and uh, Tammy had requested prayer for um, her son's bearded dragon Garf who is doing well and Kelly was on last week and had requested prayer for her dog and her dog of 11 years um, went in for surgery last week I think on Thursday it was Wednesday or Thursday and um, he had a tumor that was um, inoperable so he was put down and that was sad because I understand that was her partner in crime and my dogs are my partners in crime too they're part of the family they might be furry but they're still part of the family they're still my kids so I really felt for her but God blessed her in another way that day and they birthed two uh, new Nubian goats um, on their homestead so you know God takes away but God gives and and there's purpose in everything and that's something that we all have to learn to understand and not be angered at with God that as we go through these things you know I I lost my my abilities um, back in 2016 and I'm still progressively trying to get them back and you know I was never once angered at him because I was unable to move and that I had to lay flat for almost a year it wasn't like that it, it's it's learning to accept where you are and knowing that he has purpose in it and there was great purpose I learned so much in that place so I want to encourage you guys too that as you're walking through these things and you're going through these rough patches to know that you know God doesn't bring negativity into our lives God um, brings in positive things into our lives the the Unfortunately, the enemy is the uh, Lord of this earth, and unless we call on God, we allow the enemy to do a lot of destruction, and, and there's always going to be negativity and destruction in our lives because he, the enemy, is present, and we need to always remember to send him back where he belongs, but when we call on God and we know that God is in our lives, there is going to be a lot of positive in our lives, a lot of blessings in our lives. And he is always going to be present. Um, don't ever feel that he isn't present when you don't feel his presence, you don't hear him, you, you don't think he's there. You have to learn to trust in that and have great faith in that, that he's always present. And when you may not, you know, hear him and see him, it could be because he's carrying you. Mona said the video is staticky and stop and go. Well... I can't, it's nice and clear on my end, but unfortunately, we do have bad weather, so the replay will be fine, um, so if it's too cumbersome to watch now, you might might just want to catch the replay and just watch the replay. Um, unfortunately, I can't change that, and I'm working off of the main Facebook app. The other app I was using is no longer available, so I'm not sure. We'll just have to see how it goes. Keep me posted, though, Mona. Is anybody else having problems watching? Do you need a hand, or are you all right down there? <laughs> all right. He's working on our ceilings. I'm going to do another video then and show you guys all the progress. Um, something else that was a real blessing, uh, you guys know the mountain man was trapping, and uh, we took his hides to the... Um, person that we normally take them to and he was no longer taking them this year he had lost his wife and he was only taking hides for taxidermy so we decided to put the mountain man's hides in the auction this year and uh, this year bobcats and coyotes went very very well and did very very well so we got enough money to pay for the steel for our railings uh, for the loft and going down the stairs so he's gonna make the wrought iron railings um, for the for the house and right now he's working on the ceiling in the main room um, in our great room down there that was all Tyvek as you guys have seen in previous videos so when you see the progress that has gone on um, 
since my last video you'll you'll be really I know you'll be really impressed he's been doing amazing stuff the bathroom is almost completely finished so it's looking really good are you sure you don't need help no, I... all right <laughs> I can hear him down there I don't know if you guys can hear him but I was just wanting to make sure he didn't need an extra set of hands all right so like I said, God continues to bless. You are hearing how he's blessing us in this walk. It's just amazing. And, and you know, truthfully, I really believe that the more faithful we are, the more we walk in his ways, the more we honor his word, the more up and up we try to be, um, the more rewarded we are. And like I said, it's not that you go seeking that. It's just that you live properly and... And as you walk that out, God is continually present. So just don't disregard that. And um, if there's any way that I can be praying for you guys, um, please please mention it. Please let me know. Um, you can leave it in the comments below. You can email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. You can personal message me. Um, but... We have a wonderful community of prayer warriors, and there is so much power in prayer. It is just beyond amazing to me to see how all of you are, are sharing your prayer requests and to see how God is answering those prayers. I haven't heard back from Diana yet. Um, maybe she'll be able to join us um, to see how Martin is doing. Martin is the one who had a heart attack and ended up in a coma. And um, I have it. Jill, how is uh, Layla Rose? Um, any new word on that? Um, Layla Rose is the one who needs a new heart. So, guys, the more we form this community, the more awed I am. It's just been so amazing. And I want to thank all of you that are coming over and joining us in our community. Um, if you um, haven't heard me speaking about it, you know, Wednesdays are great that we get to do this. I get so empowered by being able to visit with you guys. And I know, based on what a lot of you tell me, that you are gaining from it as well. That it's a blessing to you. And and that's just Wednesdays. So, I'm trying to create a community where we are available to be there for one another all the time. And I started doing that over on Patreon. So if you are interested in being a part of that, you can join us over there at treyerwilderness.com slash community. Um, a bunch of you have started joining over there where we can, um, I will be sharing a lot of materials there. Um, basically what that area will be is a one-stop area for all of our materials. My podcast will be shared on there. Any new videos will be shared on there. I will be posting regularly on there and um, just community communing with you guys and and also that enables you guys to communicate together as well so it's giving us a place that we can all communicate well it's wholesome it's private and we don't have to worry about it being shut down having to worry about it disappearing on us and um, it's also a means of you guys being able to help support us um, it's three dollars a month and it works out to like 11 cents a day um, but it enables you guys to help keep us going, keep us live, keep us sharing what we are sharing, but gives us a place that we can all commune together. Um, Charles says, thank you so much, so much, all of you for your prayers and support. Sorry, my, my eyes are not cooperating. Jill says, no word on Layla, waiting is hard. Yeah, you know, waiting can be very difficult. Waiting, waiting can be probably harder than anything else in testing our, our uh, faith muscles, uh, for sure. I mean, we're, we're in a position right now where um, we really can't make any plans until our house sells, and we don't know um, what we will be doing, where we will be going. You know, the most we know right now is that when our house sells, we will be putting up a tent and living in that tent. It'll be a nice time of year. Hopefully, we're hoping that it sells fast, and we will just be hanging out in the tent and getting our bearings, getting uh, regrouped and grounded, and listening for that small, still voice for guidance. Um, we do intend to 
uh, build a small structure where we will be setting up our tent. But um, right now we just don't have any guidance from God and we know that um, the important part of the whole process is taking God's direction. Because when you go on your own direction and on your own tangents and don't wait for God, um, it's not a pleasant place to be. Uh, we both experienced that in our in our earlier days, and we are looking 100% for God's guidance. Jill says, come to Canada. Well, we might be coming to Canada only to go through to go to Alaska. But if we do do that, I will look you up for sure, my dear girl. <laughs> but just don't know. We don't know what we're going to do yet. I mean, like, like I said earlier, we are so overwhelmed and tired and exhausted that we aren't making any decisions until we can think straight. But uh, it'll be quite the blessing just to be able to sell this, for this to have somebody living in it that loves it as much as we do. And when this area and the work that we are doing is complete, to me, it's like the perfect space. It's so cozy and so inviting and so welcoming and it's exactly what we were anticipating for ourselves. But, you know, a lot of people are like, well, that's such a shame that you have to sell this. You've put so much sweat and blood and tears into it. And we have, but you know what? It's a material thing and so are all of our belongings and it's kind of funny. I've been talking about that all along about decluttering, sorting, selling, all that stuff and you know, we're going through stuff, and I've really gotten us down to a bare minimum, and I'm ready to go sort through it again and just get rid of more. I Material things don't have, have any value to really, to either of us right now. Um, there's so much more to life than these material things. Do you need an extra hand or you got it? Okay. <laughs> Tammy says we have family in Alaska. Yeah, and we have a couple friends in Alaska too. Um, my friend Doc is up there with his wife Vivian, and they are amazing people. And if you haven't seen, um, baby, what's Lonnie's channel? Far North Bush yeah, that's right. Far North Bushcraft. Lonnie and Connie are up there also. If you haven't checked them out on uh, YouTube, you should definitely check them out. Far North Bushcraft. They are a lot of fun. Let them know that Treyer Wilderness sent you over. Um, but I, I don't know. We don't know. You know, it's just, I'm telling you guys, we are like just so spent. We're so wore out. But I, I can't express to you also how blessed we are. So being wore out is okay. Just don't make any big decisions when you're in this state. That is one thing I'm going to tell you. Don't make any big decisions when you are burned out, wore out, and can't think straight. That's just not wise. So we aren't. We're doing what we need to do, what we are able to do, what we are uh, um, able to function enough to do, and and you need to work your way through this this position, this place, and, and, and it will pass. You gotta know that. As uh, Mike Cook said earlier, it's a roller coaster ride, and it is. It's a roller coaster ride. Life is a roller coaster ride, and you just have to accept the things that you're experiencing, accept where you are, and and um, just live one day at a time. I think a couple weeks ago that was the title of the uh, uh, video, one day, taking one day at a time, and sometimes that means one minute at a time because sometimes life does get really hard and really rough and really raw. You know, um, when you lose family members and, and lose homestead animals and and are, are walking out um, divorce and different things, you know, it's just, it gets raw, it gets nitty gritty, and it gets hard, and, and it's okay to admit that. You know, I am tremendously blessed, but I'm also wore out, and I'm not afraid to tell you guys that. It would be foolish of me to, to sit here and try to tell you that I'm not wore out, um, because I wouldn't be of any help to you. You know, you need to realize that everybody on this planet goes through the same type of stuff. Some just candy coat it better than others. And, and honestly, like I said earlier, I'm sharing facts. I'm not complaining. And if you are like I am, I know others of you out there are, um, you know, you don't like to complain. Complaining is kind of like a negative emotion. 
like what I have been expressing all year, but it's okay to express the facts and, and still embrace your life, still move forward, but not, you know, not get stuck in those facts, not get stuck in any negative negativity and, and just keep going about it and keep on keeping on. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. But the other thing we can do is request prayer in that process. Don't, don't try to do it alone. Sometimes doing this stuff alone can be really hard and really rough. That's why it's beautiful that we have amazing people in our lives, that we have you guys as a tremendous community. You know, your outpouring of prayers and love and, and your kind words all the time are so powerful to us, have been major stepping stones in our process to keep going. And, you know, like I said earlier, when you do this and you go through this stuff and you are willing to be raw, you know, you can help each other on this pathway because oftentimes people see us as being tremendously strong people and we are, we're strong, we're strong willed, we're stubborn, but we're also going through the same emotions you guys do. And, um, as you walk the walk and you want to, you know, you want to be stronger, you can, the more you build your faith muscles, the more you'll end up where we are walking out in a strong faith and in in a strong way but it is important for you guys to realize that we are human and that we are no different than you guys I want to read something to you guys and bear with me here I keep rotating um, last week I think was worse um, I had an incident where I was around toxins I I knew I was around them but I've been feeling good and I was being overpowered by this will to be well and I made a mistake um, instead of backing out of the room where the toxins were in I went in and I took care of it myself well it put me um, in a place where my muscles were no longer working again remember how my muscles would tighten up along my throat and my neck and my chest and um, they started doing that again, so um, I've been using magnesium oil, so guys, when you have um, problems with your muscles tightening and not wanting to loosen, topical magnesium oil is absolutely amazing. You can make your own. I will um, put a post out about that um, if I can. If not, I will put it in the description below. Um, you can make your own magnesium oil. It's very simple, very easy, but I will also include a link to um, some that you can purchase um, but magnesium oil is very effective um, my body obviously doesn't handle magnesium real well internally so by topically applying it I get great very fast results I also have been having to nurture my body I've been back um, unable to find a comfortable position so I was working out of my bed Thursday and Friday of last week and um, I'm kind of having to constantly change position. However, my muscles are re-strengthening. I'm feeling much better, but it's a process and, um, I got to learn to just progressively go into my healing and not think that I am miraculously healed before I kill myself, but that was my own doing. But, um, learning how to take care of ourselves is important. I know Jill is working on some things right now. By the way, girl, how are you? I hope you are pain free today. I know you have your good days and bad days too. Um, but it's one of those things. That's another thing, you know, that can be really draining. Um, I know I got a little frustrated because I, like I said, like to keep going and we've got a lot to do. I don't like leaving it all to him where I'm doing all the easy finger work on the computer. I would like to help him as much as I can. Um, that's also important. Something else to remember when you are going through this as a team, um, you know, that this is a family affair, keeping each other up, helping each other, um, not, you know, trying to, um, leave one person doing all the duties, you know, when you can share in the duties and share in the work that helps too through these processes and also praying for one another. That is huge. That is one of the biggest and most powerful things we can do as a family is pray for one another. I have always prayed for my children. I have always prayed for my, my man. Um, you know, that is, we can't always help them in word. Our words don't mean anything sometimes when you're in a frustrated state or in a low state. Um, words can be powerful, but sometimes they can also just, it can just be in a place where you, your words aren't helping. And as a 
in tune wife or spouse, you do pick up on that. So, you know, offering good words of encouragement is important, but when you can see that the frustration levels are beyond that, prayer is huge. I pray for my man every day because he is the leader of my home, and um, I think that that is a very big responsibility, so I pray for him all the time. So just something else to think about. But I kind of went off on a bunny trail there in my trying to get up and reposition, but I think I know that I'm speaking to other people. I know there's other people out there that are dealing with pain and frustrations and struggles and are limited in their abilities, and those limitations can be very, very hard to move past because we are strong, stubborn, willed people that uh, that want to be able to do what we want to do and sometimes we're not willing to accept where God places us for the time being. So you're in my prayers. I know who you are and I am praying for you all. All right, this is Philippians 1 6. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it. Keep trusting God. Keep keeping on and keep trusting God. When Mark Matausik told people that a potentially fatal disease had saved his life they didn't understand. He wasn't glad he got sick, but without it he'd never have discovered and tapped into the strength to confront and overcome some of his core fears. He writes, hardship can be the blood in the muscles that pushes us forward. Crisis takes us to the brink and forces us to keep moving. When people call it a blessing, they're describing a paradox. It's when men often blossom in wartime and women are changed by childbirth. They come alive as never before. The truth is, God is committed to your spiritual growth. It's the truth. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ. And along the way, you'll be tested, sometimes to your limits. One author writes, spiritual tests try our faith and commitment. Remember Abram and Isaac? Nothing makes us prouder than seeing our children succeed, and God had great plans for Isaac. What, God, what, could, what could possibly go wrong? A lot. We've stood in Abram's sandals and clung to God's promises, yet sickness lingers, financial troubles invade, friends betray us, and death calls. Abram responded with trust and commitment. It wasn't easy for him. We know the outcome. He didn't. Yet he was prepared to take his son's life. God never wanted Isaac's death. He wants our whole and committed hearts. When trials don't make sense, he promises to set limits, to walk with us and bring forth good. Guys, this is also true. And, you know, I hope that that is one thing that you do see in us. I share the truth with you. I share our walk with you. You know, it's scary. It's it's sucks <laughs> it does it just sucks sometimes in in our in our spot sometimes the harder we work you know the less ahead we get and we go a little further and then we see God's hand in it all so you can't you can't judge every minute of your day you've got to be able to keep moving and and look at what God's doing and see what God's doing as you look back and that's the important part but the thing is guys Hardship can be the blood in the muscles that pushes us forward. It's the truth. If that, our hardships are what molds us. Our hardships are what help us to grow. Our hardships help us to see our faults. You know, in our hardships, we see our weaknesses. We see maybe our poor character shining through because we are pushed. And you know, I say it, I've said it before, and this is one line that I love from Todd White. That when we get squeezed in hardship, what should come out is is Jesus. And it's truth. I mean, when you squeeze a lemon, you get lemon. When we get squeezed, it should be Jesus that's coming out. And, you know, that's where our hardships build us and mold us to the point that when we are squeezed, that is what comes out. If we allow him to mold us. That's the key thing. We need to be willing to see our faults and to see our weaknesses and to see where we can improve and to see that maybe in our hardship and in our struggle we are caving to it and allowing it to consume us instead of overcoming it. 
And those are important things to see because sometimes in our weakness, we don't always see the forest through the trees. Like I said, that's why we're not making any decisions. We are wore out and tired to the point that we're not thinking straight and it would be foolish of us to make decisions at this point. And, and it's being willing to see that and being willing to acknowledge that that's where we're at right now. It's okay. It, it, it happens. And then progressing through it. So remember that. The other thing that really stood out to me was um, the one author that said, spiritual tests try our faith and commitment. And, and you've heard me talk about that a lot. You know, that all of this is testing our faith muscles and building us to become... Um, these warriors for Christ and helping us to progress to new levels of strength, new levels of growth. And during that time, you know, and as we progress in that area, we are able to be a light and a blessing to others. And we should be. So I hope this all makes sense. I, I, like I said, um, we're in a weird place, but we are progressing and we look forward to sharing this with you, sharing our progress. Um, you will see us jumping up and down and celebrating once our house is listed because that will be a very key point in, in, our, in, in the stages of our journey is getting this listed because we have spent the whole winter working in this house and there has been a lot of work that needed to get done. So, um, it's just really awesome. It's awesome to see the progress. It's awesome to see where we've come. Um, you know, I talk about my journal and my pride in that I am finally doing this daily. And what a great way to be able to look back and also see our progress when we, you know, write wholeheartedly in a journal and acknowledge where we're at, what we have walked through, where we have come, um, what things we have overcome, you know. The other part that really resonated to me in the very beginning of what I read to you is that when he told people that a potentially fatal disease had saved his life, you know, God saved my life, but through that process, um, I love who I've become. I love what I have learned. I love that journey, that walk. I communicate with people every week, sometimes every day in regard to the same illness, people dealing with the same thing, people that have progressed because they found my video. You know, God has purpose in everything. He uses us as vessels to save other lives. He uses us as vessels to walk tall in integrity and, and in faith so that we can shine. And you know, I talked the last couple weeks about the church failing. And you know, the church is us. In reality, we are the church. We are the people. We are the body. We are the body of Christ. And we have the ability to change lives and to make a difference. And you know, you may not realize that while you're walking out something that you may feel is, you know, a simple struggle, you never know who's watching. So just always remember that guys always remember that remember there's purpose in everything remember that you're not alone and remember that there is great pride strength and faith muscles that are formed when you keep on keeping on now I want to remind you guys that there is a huge prayer list below and um, I will try to get information on Martin and uh, honestly guys God is answering such miraculous prayers. The last time we heard on Martin, he was actually reacting to stimuli through his coma. So I truly believe that his coma is um, a healing coma. And we need to pray for Kelly's daughter, Courtney. Courtney will be going down to Arizona for further testing. She had a brain tumor um, removed. Um, oh, I love casting crowns. Yes, uh, Tammy said, makes me think of the Casting Crown song. And you know what, guys? There is so much to be found in, in listening to good, wholesome music, too. I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, it really revives my spirit when I am listening to um, music that feeds my soul, music that translates what I'm feeling. 
and and gives me hope so keep that in mind in the description below is my um, uh, playlist from Spotify that you can also if you're part of Spotify you can listen to it if you want to uh, gives me great pleasure to listen to mine it also renews me when I'm in a really low place but what I wanted to share with you too was um, and I also want to ask you guys to keep praying for Sarah. Sarah is dealing with um, addiction. She acknowledges that she needs help, but she's not fully there. Um, and as with people with addiction, you know, they often are really causing their family great struggles. I mean, that's a horrible thing to walk through, both for the addict as well as those that love them and that are closest to them. So I'd really like to ask that you pray for the whole family and uh, just really keep lifting Sarah. She needs to be willing to seek help on her own in order for um, any progress to happen. Uh, forcing her into it isn't going to make the difference as much as her wanting it. So help me to pray for that. And um, please pray for those on our list. If you guys do need prayers, please don't hesitate to ask. And um, I want to share something uh, with you guys. You know, I below is a Bible verse from Romans 10, 9 through 11 and 13. And um, it explains what you need to do to know Jesus. But I want to share something with you. Um, you know, I feel like we are reaching a lot of new people. There's a lot of people listening into these and... Um, I've decided that I want to start adding this at the end of the videos uh, to maybe encourage and inspire um, maybe some non-believers uh, to know what they need to do. Um, three reasons why you need Jesus. Jesus loves you and he desires to have a relationship with you and to give you a life full of joy, happiness, and purpose. One of the things you can do and one of the reasons you need Jesus is because you have a past. We all have a past. And you can't go back, but he can. And the Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's Hebrews 13, 8. And that um, he can walk into those places of sin and failure and wipe the slate clean. That is his promise to us. And, and give you a new beginning. And I want to remind you that when you do that and you take that step, you need to know that, that those things may not fully be removed from you. So don't feel like you've stepped into something and it was false. Realize that you stepped into something that's going to require a little work. That if you have things from your past, which we all do, that haunt us and bother us, um, as you progress with your walk with Jesus, those things will become much more minute and they will eventually be gone. They will be gone. And you will, you will um, have a different life ahead of you. You do have a new beginning, and those things are wiped clean. It's just a process for us as individuals to walk through them. So remember that. And just keep praying that God helps you walk through those things. The other thing is that um, you need a friend. We all do. And Jesus knows the worst about us, yet he still believes in us and he loves us every day. And because he sees you not as you are, but as you will be when he is done working with you, that's a friend. A friend that stays, a friend that lasts, a friend that is committed for the long haul. The other thing is, the reason you need Jesus is because he holds the future. Very true. Who else are you going to trust? In his hands, you are safe and secure. Today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. His word says, For I know the plans I have for you, the plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. That's Jeremiah 29, 11, and 12. These are truths, and it's something just so simple to be able to accept him and, and lean on him and call on him as friend. Regardless what you've done in your past, regardless what you do in your future, because we make mistakes ahead too, the beauty is he's accepting and he loves us regardless. All we need to do is ask him. And the other thing is, he's promised that to all of us already. We are promised that goodness and that love when he died on the cross. We just need to be willing to accept it. 
So I'm just going to say a prayer for those of you that are out there that are interested in taking um, Jesus as your Savior. Um, all you need to do is bow your head and pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I believe you died for me and that your blood pays for my sins and provides me with the gift of eternal life. By faith, I receive that gift and I acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. I'm going to start doing altar calls because we are reaching people all over the planet and um, I just feel like I'm being called to do that. So, uh, and in what we are walking, like I've said to you many times, I couldn't imagine walking this walk without him present in our day to day and in our lives and um, what he's doing in our lives and what he's doing in your lives that you've shared with me. It's so amazing and it's so amazing to see God taking you guys by the hand and leading you through your struggles and taking you to the other side and the strength that you may not see in yourselves but that I see. And like I said, I'm not the hero here. I'm just the vessel. We are the heroes. You guys are the heroes. You guys are amazing and you make a difference in my life all the time and you make a difference in the lives of others you all have gifts and powerful traits that God gifted you with and has enabled you to be a vessel of your own so what are you doing <laughs> huh <laughs> I hear you uh-huh I don't know if you're hearing him, but he's down there making all kinds of racket. No, I'm up here. Oh, you're up here. Oh, you're up here. I'll show you what the mountain man is doing. I'm probably afraid to see because he's been on scaffolding, on ladders, and everything else. Let's see if I can share this with you. Hang on. Okay. Now, keep in mind, there is a great mess everywhere. Huh? Oh, my goodness. I see that. <laughs> As he stated. No, 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 no. Well, come over there. Do you need a hand? No. I think I got it. There's our ceiling. There's my mountain man breaking his back. And like he said, it's not OSHA approved, but it's Treyer approved. So, but there you can see my new ceiling lighting down there, new lighting, new walls, new all kinds of stuff. So he's putting the ceiling in over there and uh, I'll show you more at another time. Okay. <laughs> it's okay, Mrs. Sorry. So I will show you a fuller video of the progress as we progress in there. He's going to get the ceiling all in and there'll be a uh, box put into the ceiling up above for uh, fans to help keep the heat out of the upper loft and out of the room so that I don't feel like my skin is melting. All right, so I've kept you on here long enough today. And like I said, I am in a weird state, so I apologize today because today was not near like our other videos. I know I was a little bit all over the place, but I'm human too, and that's all part of it. I can't imagine how the heck he is doing that by himself. Yes, I know. He, he has extreme strength. Tammy said to be careful. Yeah, he's, the other day was even scarier because he was over the staircase. He does a lot of things that scares me. Um, I think I've told you before, he climbs in trees like an orangutan. So he has a tendency to scare me. A lot um, but he's very gutsy and has excessive lives so far so um, yeah don't do that at home don't do that at home but um, and I can't help at that height um, I don't have the upper strength to be able to help him so uh, but he has the double layers of scaffolding so the higher he goes He'll be all right. We have we have we have the equipment to do what we need to do. Just pray for us that we have this physical strength and the 
ability to work through this extremely tired stage we're in. Like I said, I think in three weeks you will see different people uh, presenting themselves because the extreme weight of getting this listed is over. So we are we are under the gun, and we are we are under the gun because we are forced to be under the gun. So that makes it even harder. But we are progressing. We have a smile on our face, and we are, as you've heard, extremely blessed, constantly extremely blessed. And God is ever present. So don't discount that, discredit that for yourself in your walk. And um, you know, if you're not able to be as positive as we are while you're walking through your walk, don't let that discourage you either. This has been a process for us, um, not only for the last few years, but we've both walked through a lot of different things over our lives that have created um, and, and manifested who we are um, and have made us as strong and faith-led as we are. So keep walking, keep building your faith muscles, and you will end up at this place too. And that is honestly um, a really awesome place to be when your faith is totally in God. Um, like I said last week, I'm tired guys, but I don't have fear and I don't have worry. Um, it's an amazing walk, it's an amazing place when you can get to that place. So I encourage you to keep building your faith muscles, keep trusting Him, keep reading His Word, um, there's so much power in that, and uh, huh. I wish you guys a really good week. I wish you guys um, peace in your journey. Like I said, I know many of you are walking in um, difficult places too, and although they are different, it doesn't make them any easier, and I know that. So I want to encourage you guys today, and I'm going to say a prayer for us. Papa, I just thank you for your love and mercies on us. I thank you for your constant hand. I thank you for being there even when we can't feel you and see your presence. But just knowing that you're there and oftentimes when we can't feel you, it's because you're carrying us. You know our limitations. You know where we're at. You know our, our the plans you have for us. We may not know all that, but you always know what you have in store for us and what, that it's always good and that it will always bless us and we just need to hold on tight to that truth and be willing to walk that out and be faithful and trusting in that and when we feel fear and worry and those negative emotions setting in instead of hiding behind them we need to call on you and ask you to take it and when we ask you to take it we need to be willing to give it up and not hang on tight and think that we know best learning to give up our fears and our worries and our our places even you know the place that we're in that we can't control those things we can't control we we can't do anything about them but you can and you can remove those things from us and remove the weights lighten the weights and provide peace and joy and we need to be willing to learn how to do that because as we learn how to do that our walk with you will get so much stronger and better so i encourage you Papa to just wrap your arms around each of these people but I encourage them to be willing to call on you and to give up their their struggles to you and to have faith and trust in you for the outcome at all times and just uh, be with all of them in their walk as they are keep on keeping on that's all we can do is trust in you and keep putting one foot in front of the other trusting the outcome loving you for loving us and just being uh, okay with where we're at and trusting that there, there is something on the other side that this too shall pass. So Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving arms around everyone watching this, give them peace and strength in their walk and the courage, the courage to do what they need to do um, as they walk this out and the courage to have a stronger faith and the courage to give things up to you knowing that you will take them and make better of what they're what they're walking so Lord I just thank you for what you've done today here thank you for working in me thank you for the blessings you've given my family and those around us and those watching and just keep my man safe while he's working and be with everyone, keep them safe and healthy and strong until we meet again. And I ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Okay, guys. 
I wish you a really good week. I am praying for all of you because I know that as you progress through this walk that you're walking out that you struggle too and that it's not easy and um, that you have hard times where you're tired and worn out and weary as well. But I want to remind you though to keep being strong in your faith and keep pulling into Him because that is the answer. That is truly the answer guys. Um, and, and that we know and that we are doing. And our, our walk will get better. Our, our bodies will be renewed when our bodies catch up to our faith and our spirit. So just hang in there. You're not alone. And uh, we will be praying for all of you. We thank each and every one of you for your prayers. And again, to the gracious person out there that also follows us, thank you for your incredible blessing this week. What a, what a blessing that was. Just thank you for following God's word and being, being diligent to his calling. And thank you for blessing us. We love you all. We'll see you guys next week. God bless.